what is DMX? DMX is an acronym for Digital Multiplex, which is a control language used to control modern lighting and effects equipment. DMX is a communication protocol designed as a standard between devices, regardless of the manufacturer. A single DMX network, known as a universe, can identify 512 distinct channels or addresses. For larger installations, systems and light boards can have multiple sets of these universes which can cleanly work together. The United States Institute of Theater Technology, USITT, developed the DMX 512 protocol in 1986 as a simple, reliable, and flexible standard for lighting control. In 1998, USITT transferred preservation of DMX to the Entertainment Services and Technology Association, ESTA, which is a nonprofit trade organization that represents the entertainment technology industry. In 2004, the DMX 512 standard was approved by the American National Standards Institute, ANSI. How does DMX work? One of the fundamental concepts of DMX is the ability to transmit data on multiple channels over a single cable. If this was not possible, one would have to have hundreds of cables running from a lighting console throughout the theater. In order to accomplish this, a DMX decoder must be built into all of the affected equipment. The DMX decoder is usually represented by a set of dip switches or an LED LCD display. This control number is commonly referred to as the DMX address. Traditionally, light boards send signals to dimmer racks, which would then control the power being supplied to light fixtures. Now, many fixtures, whether they be lights, color scrollers, effects wheels, or fob machines, can be controlled by DMX whether a dimmer is involved or not. Many DMX devices are capable of receiving and utilizing numerous control channels at once. This capability is accomplished by setting the base address or the main DMX address for the piece of equipment, in which case the remaining attributes use the sequential control channels. Regardless of how many channels a particular device uses, a full set of control information is passed to it. It simply ignores the information not addressed specifically to that device. Units are then set up in a daisy chain fashion, where the signal is passed from, from the controller to each device in a single line. Up to 32 devices may be connected in a daisy chain. You will notice that DMX units have a signal input jack and output jack to aid in this information pass along. The last device in the chain should make use of a terminator which absorbs leftover signal power so that it's not reflected back into the cable, which would degrade the data. It may be possible to ignore the use of a terminator in short cable runs, but the longer the run, the more likely the signal will be reflected back, a probability which can lead to surprising, uncontrolled results. So it's best to use a terminator at the end of any DMX signal chain. A DMX splitter repeater or opto-isolator, can overcome a 4,000 cable run limit by boosting and retransmitting the signal, and it can increase the number of devices by up to 32 per branch. Connectors. The DMX standard specifies 5-pin XLR connectors, Canon X connector with a latch and rubber guard. Only three of these pins have standardized use at this time. The additional two pins were included for future growth. One pin serves as the ground and two for data. Unfortunately, many manufacturers opt to use the less expensive three pin XLR connectors, which are commonly used for audio cable and microphones. Some manufacturers also use the currently unused pins to carry voltage, a practice which can be tragic if used with equipment not intended for the extra power. Cable. DMX 512 requires twisted pair shielded low capacitance data cable. The twisted pair layout helps eliminate interference and a cable shield also helps protect against interference. Many people try substituting cheaper balanced audio cable, microphone cable with inconsistent results. 
audio cable is not designed to support the signal rate of the high-speed DMX protocol. Although it may work over short distances, it is highly vulnerable to interference and degradation, leading to unstable results. Fixture profiles. Each DMX channel carries a value range of 255. D dimmers normally use one DMX channel per light, in which case zero equals off and 255 equals full on. Intelligent fixtures use one DMX channel per parameter. Each fixture has a DMX channel map that matches control channels and parameters. These maps can vary between manufacturers and even fixtures within manufacturers. As an example, a relatively simple LED part unit, which doesn't physically move, may only have three channels, one for each color. Channel one equals red, two equals blue, three equals green. More complex fixtures require more channels because they have more options. As an example, channel one equals pan, channel two equals tilt, channel three equals color, channel four equals gobo, channel five equals dimmer. Now pan, tilt, and dimmer functions are linear, but color and gobo functions require more finesse. In the case of a color wheel with six colors plus open, no color, the fixture might assign a DMX value map to each color. As an example, 0 to 35 might equal open, 36 through 70 equals red, 71 to 105 cyan, 106 to 140 green, 141 to 175 yellow, 176 to 210 blue, 211 to 255 magenta. Again, this is just one example, which would vary by manufacturer and fixture type. The DMX channel and value mapping are saved into a computer file for each DMX controller and this is called a fixture profile. In order to use a specific fixture with a controller, it's easiest if one can load the profile of your fixture into the controller, lightboard. Many controllers come preloaded with hundreds or thousands of fixture profiles from many different manufacturers. You don't have to have a specific fixture profile. You may just use a generic DMX unit profile, but being able to load the profile into your board can make it easier to keep track of all the parameters available for you to control. Profiles, for example, may help you keep track of how many DMX channels each fixture uses. Typically, however, the manual that comes with a fixture when you purchase it offers a guide of which channel controls which parameter. Master versus slave. Many fixtures can be set up as a master or slave. In a slave configuration, the unit's function is a copy of the master unit, or as if multiple units have the same DMX address. For example, if you had a full set of LED park cans or color scrollers, you could have them set in a master and slave configuration so that one unit in that wash is set to red, they all display red. This is one way to conserve DMX addresses and can save on programming time. Some units are also sound sensitive. Popular in club or party settings, the units can be placed in this function so they will move or change color and gobo patterns according to the beat of the music. This is another opportunity where a designer might set one unit to be sound sensitive and also serve as the master for other slave units. Perhaps because one unit will be closer to the source of the music, so that regardless of placement, all the lighting fixtures will at least be in time with each other. DMX and power. Normally, DMX does not supply power. The standard is simply a communication protocol. This means that fixtures need to be plugged into either straight power or a dimmer, depending on the type of fixture and the amount of control you need over the light, and to receive DMX information. In the case of color scrollers, projector dowsers, and certain other effects fixtures, a four pin DMX cable is used to supply both the control information on two of the pins and low voltage on the other two pins. Be careful to avoid sending voltage through a DMX cable to a fixture that doesn't require it. Supplying electricity when not requested can damage the fixture and possibly cause a fire or other emergency.